is pleased to announce the hare has finally beat the tortoise. In the past six months, the Times Herald has gained in total Sunday readers. The news is lost. And while we've always led the news in Dallas and Dallas County, it's nice to jump ahead in total circulation, too. We've made ourselves the better paper. You've made us the bigger paper. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. Ferndale is an average small American town surrounded by nice middle-class American homes. It is located in a middle America state and is about as representative of the United States and what its citizens are all about as you can imagine. Nobody in an atmosphere like this has any contact with violence or walks in any fear except... Who knows what hides in the private jungle beyond any respectable door? Pow! Gotcha. Dead center. All right, Billy. Give me the guns. Oh, Mom, can I take them to school? Sorry, partner. But I wanted to show Clancy Williams. Unlatch that belt, pale face, or I'll use it to make your other end red. Better get on your horse. Bye, Mom. I love you. <laughs> I love you, too, Billy boy. And I also could kill your Uncle Ralph for this stupid birthday present. Guns. What place do they have in our life? Or anyone's? <laughs> Why does the back doorbell always ring when you're at the front? Coming! All right, all right. What's so important? Yes? Hello, wife. Long time no see. Who are you? What do you... Oh. Oh, no. It could be... Our mystery drama, You Only Die Once, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Joan Loring and Joseph Julian. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. This is the world of the piston engine, an automobile engine that's reigned supreme all of this century. You've just entered Mazda's rotary engine world. A world that has no pistons, valves, rods, no reciprocating motion whatsoever. It is therefore a world of uncanny quiet, serene smoothness, an uncomplicated world with far less to go wrong. It's a world where clean air requirements, good mileage, and incredible performance exist harmoniously. You have to drive this car to understand why Mazda's rotary engine may replace the piston engine. Time demands change. The past gives way to the future. The rotary engine Mazda. Test drive the Mazda and discover the astonishing difference in Mazda's rotary engine world. Experience the future today at R.D. Rhino Mazda in Fort Worth. Another winning season for Kalman Born Sporting Goods. That makes 72 in a row. You can be a winner during the month of August at Kalman Born's Anniversary Spectacular. Start your own streak in the Billiard League with a Brunswick Commander Pool Table. Seven-foot table, originally $335, now $259. The eight-foot table, originally $349, is now only $279. During Kalman Born's 72 in a row anniversary saving streak in every department. At all nine Dallas-Fort Worth locations. <laughs> Exciting news from Shook. Take a 10-day test ride on the world-famous Michelin steel-belted radial tires. Feel the difference Michelins make in the way your car handles and rides. Buy four Michelins during this special test ride offer and receive absolutely free a nine-digit electronic calculator or a pair of name brand shock absorbers of original equipment quality with free installation. Hurry, quantities are limited, and this offer good through August 10th. 
Shook Tire and Rubber Company, your Michelin and undercar specialists. Two convenient locations, Mockingbird at Irving Boulevard and Ross and Field. See you at Shook. Marge Stanley loves her mornings. In fact, she loves her whole life. It suits her. It's just her style. She's naturally a morning person. By 8 a.m., Billy is off for school and her husband Howard off for the bank. Then she has a long, long morning to set the house to rights, lays a little in the bathtub, freshen and dress crisp and smart as always. It's a routine that never tires and is seldom broken. And certainly never as rudely and shockingly as this day that brings terror, violence, and the threat of death to her loved ones and herself. Hey, March. Come on, snap out of it. Uh, uh, what happened to me? You passed out. Oh, I remember I opened the back door and even with the beard, I thought for a moment... He's... He... I mean, it's eight years ago and he's... Dead. He's dead. You mean Lou Miller? Yes. The guy that drowned in the reservoir? My first husband. Who died? You mean your husband? I didn't die, Marge. I'm still alive. Oh, no. No. Please. It couldn't be. Please, God. Howard is my husband. Howard Stanley is my husband. Whoever you are, please go. You know who I am, Marge, just as well as I do. But, Jake, you drowned. There was no body, Marge, remember? You didn't drown. You are Lou. That's right, baby. Oh. I've been fingerprinted enough places to nail that down for sure. Oh. So, uh, no welcome home kiss for your loving husband? You're not. I have a husband. A meek little Joe who took off for his daily walk to the bank, huh? Mr. Howard Stanley, right? Yes. And a son, too. Cute-looking kid. How old is he? he? He's seven. Yeah. Big for his age, huh? And smart, too, I bet. He's very smart. Just like Howard. He must be. Seven years old and in the fourth grade. Never mind, Billy. It's you. What happened? Where have you been? Now, that's, like they say, a long story. Tell you what. Why don't you fix me some eggs and bacon the way you used to? And some good hot steam and drip coffee, like the old days. And while you're at it, you and me can have a good long talk about the future. What did you come back for, Lou? I'm your husband. After walking out on me for seven years? I didn't walk out on you, babe. Remember? I was dead. But you're not. You just deserted me. Did you get a divorce? Why should I get a divorce when everybody's... So, you see, we're still married. Lou, what happened? Where have you been? Remember that summer, Marge? <laughs> I'm not likely to forget it. Them three fellas held up that hat stand bank and lit out with a hundred grand. Boy, was I glad I was a scuba nut that year. When they dragged the reservoir where they were sure the guys dumped the loot before they caught them, they couldn't turn up a thing. They did post the reward, 10,000 smackers. Biggest thing ever happened in our part of the country. How could I forget? Boy, I'm telling you, sugar, I thought them water wrinkles would never wear out of my skin from diving after that bonanza. <laughs> we were going to use the 10,000 for down payment on a house and a car. Are you kidding? I ever found that suitcase jammed in some crack? I wasn't going looking for no reward. That was all gone to me. You found it? Uh, no, I didn't find it. I, I worked down to the deep end. It was a good 150 feet there. 
What happened to me was I got swept into the spillway. The what? Where the water runs out of the reservoir. Must have caught my head a real crack. I was stuck in a kind of a pipe. I got out of my tanks, and then I passed out. I must have lost my face mask then, too. Yeah, that's how come the insurance company and everybody else thought you must be drowned. What happened to you? Well, when I came to, I was lying in some reeds, like uh, half buried in the mud. There was blood all over my face. I didn't know where I was. Well, get this, Marge, because it's what counts. I didn't know who I was. And I either got out of the flippers or I had lost them. And all I had on was a pair of swim trucks. What did you do? I busted in some house and I got some clothes. And I lit out, hiking. Worked my way west. Working odd jobs. And I figured I couldn't keep drifting forever. I had to establish some sort of, uh, what do you call it? Identity. Yeah, that's it. Like who I was. I had to be someone. So I joined the service. Six-year hitch. And two nights after I'm out, I got hit in the head in a barroom, Brannigan, and pow, I remember who I am. So I figured I'd come home. You and me have some talking to do. What? I need a steak, Marge. Some dough. That's one reason I looked you up. Well, I... I could let you have 15 or maybe $25. Oh, don't kid around with me, baby. I said a steak. You know what I'm talking about. Real money. I had to do quite a bit of digging to turn you up when I got back to Ferndale. You mean other people know you're alive? Now, don't panic, doll. I ain't stupid. I may not be long on schooling, Mrs. Miller... But I got what it counts up here. Mrs. Howard. Well, now, that's the real question, ain't it? Just whose wife are you? Well, now, be reasonable, Lou. There isn't any question of that. I mean, you and I were married less than a year. Howard and I have built a life together for nearly seven years. What does your husband do at the bank? He's, you, you know, a, a bank officer. Class job, huh? Pays pretty good, huh? Banks don't pay that much money. Not even to senior vice presidents? <laughs> I told you I've been snooping around a couple of days, sweetheart, so don't try any tricky stuff. Now, let's get down to real business. Just what's it worth to you to keep this happy little home you got all in one piece? I don't think I have to tell you what it's worth. I have a savings account. I... Been saving for years for a trip we wanted to take. If you'll get out of my life again, you can have it. How much? It's nearly $3,500. And where is it? At the bank. Your husband's bank? Yes. What would you do? Just go there and draw it out? Yes. Supposing your husband caught you doing it, how would you explain? I'll go on his lunch hour. He won't have to see me. And where will I be? You can wait here or come with me, whatever you want. And no cops. No mention of any of this. Do you think I want anyone to know you're still alive? That no matter how innocent it was, I've been living with another man as his wife when I wasn't really. You think I want Billy mixed up in this? It's a small town, Lou. And a lot of people are smaller. And this... Happens to be a terribly important time in my husband's life. Yeah, I gathered from the posters. Running for mayor, Andy. I don't want to discuss Howard with you. I just want to do whatever I can from hurting that man I love. So I will go to the bank and get the money, or you can come with me. All right, me. let's knock off all the pretty talk and take a real look at where we stand. Now, you're not paying me off with any measly 3500 How much do you want? Something in the neighborhood of 30,000 green ones. Oh, you must be crazy. We haven't got that kind of... I had an insurance, Marge, remember? 15,000, double indemnity. Oh. They ever pay off? Well, well, I... Oh, I... come on, then. Don't try to give me any hard time. Yes, they did. So, of course, you blew it all on a new house and goodies. The lay odds you got a sock full of other dough somewheres... You'll pay off. Why should we? Because you've been living with a man you're not legally married to. I'd get a lawyer's opinion, first of all. 
And I would be willing to bet right now that no court would hold me or Howard responsible for an honest mistake. You'd have to give back all that pretty insurance money. You can't collect on a corpse that ain't. That could be arranged. Ah, so you do have it socked away. Whether or not we do is none of your business. There's another little thought you might have in mind. How many votes do you think it's going to cost your husband for mayor when I make this public? Sure. Just as much of a louse as I discovered right after I was stupid enough to marry you. Howard will take his chances. I think I can speak for him. Can you speak for him on everything? What are you getting at now? The one other person concerned in all this. Billy. I... You... Leave Billy out of this. How can we? He has nothing to do with you. <laughs> it was a good try, Marge. But what kind of a lunkhead do you think I am? First moment I found out there was a kid involved. Yesterday. I went and looked up the birth certificate. Oh. Billy ain't no seven years old. He's eight. Oh. And as stupid as I am, I can count. That makes him my kid. He doesn't know that, Sue. He thinks... Howard is his own father. Okay, baby, we could leave it that way. Just so you come through with the 30 grand. That's the only way you're going to get rid of me now. Until then, you got a monkey on your back. Poor Marge. Her relaxed morning has been shattered as thoroughly as her nerves. And deep as the threat to her immediate happiness seems, she has no conception of how vicious and violent her fight to protect her family is going to be. With her head swimming, she looks again at the man sprawled on the couch and hopes that it's only some ghastly dream. I'll return shortly with Act Two. Friends, there are people within the sound of my voice who never enjoy the company of their loved ones except at mealtime. They're lonely men sitting and watching baseball games all by themselves when they could be watching a parade at Six Flags in the company of their sons and daughters. There are women in the audience, and you know who you are, whose usual words to their blessed little ones are things like, be quiet and stop that. Oh, how much better it would be for her to share the thrill of a fireworks display or a suspenseful escape act with her little tots at Six Flags this Saturday or Sunday. Now, I can hear you say, I want to do that. I want to be with my family at Six Flags. I want to enjoy the rides and attractions with my dear ones, but it costs money. Well, friends, now you can do it. Saturday and Sunday are family days at Six Flags. After 3 p.m., the charge is only three fifty per person. Now think of it. Togetherness, a harmonious family for only three fifty per person. Saturday and Sunday after 3 p.m., and the park will be open late both nights. One of the delights of backyard barbecuing is eating with your fingers. One of the disadvantages is having to swat bugs with the same fingers that hold juicy, drippy hamburgers. Hi, Frank Lieber here to tell you that's why True Value Hardware Stores have Raid House and Garden Bug Killer. So you can make sure that ketchup and mustard mess goes no further than your fingers. Raid kills bugs dead, but used as directed, it won't harm plants or shrubs or your pets or the food that you serve outdoors. True Value Hardware Dealers suggest you use it this way. About half an hour before you're ready to serve... Spray Raid around your patio or picnic table. It kills bugs in the air and in the shrubbery where they hide. And Raid is just as effective indoors and safe. It won't oil stain furniture and draperies. The 13 and a half ounce aerosol can of Raid House and Garden Bug Killer is just a dollar twenty-nine. Just one of the values you'll find at the True Value Hardware Store near your home. <laughs> shock of meeting a husband you have believed dead for over eight years is enough to numb and scramble anyone's mind. At least Marge found it so. She couldn't believe that Lou was any real danger to breaking up her present family legally. Nor that the publicity would mean anything in Howard's campaign. But two things did terrify her. The effect it might have on Billy and the tension a kind of mad and inhuman quality that underlay everything that Lou said, as though, in some inexplicable way, he was dead 
inside. That he was a ghost returned from the grave. You stay away from Billy. From my own son? He's no son of yours. Like I told you, I've seen the birth certificate. I didn't mean that. I mean he's nothing like you. God. And he worships his father. I mean Howard. Who was that? I don't know. Let it go. Don't answer. Oh, that... Uh, it's Bob Russell's car in the driveway. I can see it from here. They're next door neighbors. They know I'm home. All right. Go answer. But no tricks or funny business. Put that pistol away. Go open the door. Find out what he wants... Don't let him come in, or I'll drop him like a bowling pin. All right, but don't lose your head. You just worry about your own. Uh. Hi, Marge. Sorry if I disturbed you. Uh, no. Uh, no, I-, I was in the kitchen. <laughs> I didn't want to come at all because, to tell you the truth, I thought you might have sneaked back to bed for a nap. Oh, no. I was just going to get dressed and go marketing. I know. You're the morning person. That's what Betty calls you. Uh, 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 this is all the junk on the community chest Betty promised you. Oh, that's great. How's it going? Dragging any formidable loot? Oh, for 60000 up to now, and we're only halfway along. Well, keep it in a safe place. Uh-huh. Hey, are you feeling all right? I Me? Mean, why? Well, you look a bit pale, you know, sort of oh, drawn. Oh, maybe I'm just picking up a little cold. Yeah, well, excuse me, I got a customer waiting. Uh huh. Sixty grand, huh? Oh, don't get your hopes up, Lou. It's all in small checks, most of them at the bank, and all made out to community chest. Even you couldn't figure a way to get your claws on that money. All right, you can cut the comedy. I have my own way, oh. and not much more time to waste. I've been figuring. While I was waiting for that used car salesman. Bob's a stockbroker. I want you to call your husband and get him home here from the bank. I can't do that. Well, you better, doll, or I'll lock you in a closet and go down there and bring him back my own way. I gotta get all this settled today. But I can't bring Howard home from the bank. What could I possibly... Don't answer it. That's silly. Why not? What am I going to do? Scream for help? Just don't answer it. You're out. But it might be Betty ringing to make sure Bob dropped off the stuff... Oh, oh, that's right. Howard was going to call about us having lunch together. Sam. Okay, there's an extension in the kitchen, right? Yes. I'll be listening. And don't try anything or I'll kill you. You Might as well know I have nothing to lose. Hello? Darling, it's Howard. I'm calling about lunch. (sighs) Where are you whining me? Well, uh... What was that? What was what? Was Billy home? Anyone with you? Why, uh, no. Why? It sounded as though someone was on an extension. Oh, don't be silly about about lunch. Um, why, why don't we have it here at home? Well, I'd veto that anyway, but it's what I was calling about. I can't make lunch. Oh. I've got to run up to the state capitol and have lunch with a man. <laughs> I'm certainly glad it isn't another woman. Couldn't you put it off for today? <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. Not a chance. See, this guy has got the votes I need in his pocket. I want to be mayor, honey. Just long enough to clean up our own little backyard. I know, dear. Um, so, when will I see you? Oh, around dinner time. I love you. You take care of yourself. I love you. Howard. Why did you let him get away like that? What could I do? I'll tell you what you're going to do. Call him back. Get him here. How? I don't care how. Tell him you're you're, you're sick or or Billy's sick. Lou, I can't get away with that now. You do what I tell you, damn it! Call him. Why can't I tell him the truth? You want to? He's got to know sometime. All right, then tell him... Tell him here, where I can handle him. And he doesn't get any fancy ideas of ringing in anyone else. Bye. I'll call his private number. You heard for yourself on the extension. Yeah. Well, maybe just as well. Now, look. I'm coming back to something. That insurance money. But it doesn't really exist now you're alive. You listen to me. <gasps> Please. 
That hurts. A lot more things going to hurt if things don't go my way. Now, first, the insurance money. It, Where is it? It is. Don't get me mad, baby. Your things are going to start getting real rough. It... When it finally came through, he put it in a custodian account for Billy. Uh, now that's real nice. Only Billy doesn't need it anywhere near like his old man does. So I'll tell you what. We got it made. Howard's out of the picture. So you and me will just stroll over to the bank. You can draw out the 30 grand and give it to me, and all our troubles will be over. That won't work, Lou. Why not? Because Howard is the custodian, not me. Damn. Why does everything have to go sour for me? Now what are we going to do? I told you, I have a little money in the bank. Now let's forget that chicken dribble. You don't seem to realize the spot you're in, Marge. I'm no small-time operator anymore. The chips are all down with me, so I can't lose except all the way. So you better listen to me and jump whenever I tell you to. You don't sound real. Well, this ain't no ghost story, honey. You're going to have to live with this one. And I'm stuck here until that half-pint husband of yours gets back. Why don't you go away and come back this evening? I've got a whole day of appointments. I ain't and going I'll... nowhere. Neither are you. But this is... It's just like kidnapping. You named it, baby. You named it. All we're waiting for now is the payoff. <laughs> Hey, hold on, Marge. Where do you think you're going? I... I was just going to the front door. It's about time for Billy to be coming home from school. You just stay away from doors. I'll tie you up. I've been on the go so long, I've forgotten what sleep is. Tie me up? Yeah. I don't want to take no chances. You get some crazy idea taken off. We're calling the police. With Billy coming home, I wouldn't dare. To leave him alone with me, huh? Yes. And why would I call the police? You... You do have some right to be here. Look, I'm desperate, Marge. I'm not kidding you anymore. All that guff about getting amnesia and stuck in the spillway, forget it. I was just trying to keep things nice and simple at first. You... You found that money in the reservoir all those years ago. That's right. I was going to take off from you anyway. You and me were a mistake from the beginning. Oh... That's true enough. You just wanted kids in a home. I wanted the big time. For a while, I had it. I left my air tank and my face mask bobbing in the middle of the lake, and I swam ashore. I took off for Vegas. Had a run of bad luck, so I blew the hundred grand. I had to get even with the tables, so I used a little muscle here and there with the private citizens to keep myself in bread. You mocked people. Don't look so holier than thou. I got my comeuppance, if you want to know. Six of the years since I left you, I spent in security prisons. I won't tell you what for. I'll tell you one thing. The next thing they get me for, if there is to be one, that's it. I'm in for good. So don't make any mistakes about how desperate I am. So get away from that door now. Make me some coffee. And where's the job? It's on the way to the kitchen. She's in the kitchen. Just get my guns and strap them on. Better hide unless that's the law. I could use something to eat with a coffee. All right, Lou. Who's Lou? Well, Billy, you just gotta find out. Stick them up, Lou. Lou, don't. It's just I can see who it is. It's the kid. Gee, you turned and hit the floor fast. That's a good trick. I'll tell you another good trick, shrimp. You ever heist anyone and he turns on you, don't you hold back on a trigger ever. But you were so fast. I could have put a bullet right through you, kid. Is that a real gun? Ah, uh, what would I be doing with a real gun? This is just a 
present for a kid I know. It sure looks real. Yeah, so do yours. Yeah. Who are you? This is a, is a friend of your Uncle Ralph's, Billy. Right, Lou? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you could call me Lou. I'm Billy. Put it there, partner. Shake. Your Uncle Ralph just wanted to make sure you liked the guns. So I said I was passing by and I'd stop in and check. Oh, they're super. <laughs> Hi, darling. I was just trying to find the darn key. Who are you? Unexpected visitor. A friend of the family. Marge's side. She asked me to get the door. She's feeding Billy. Come on in. Oh, sure. Sorry, it's just it was such a surprise. Have we ever met? No. Oh, don't let the get-up put you off. Uh, I just came off a camping trip. Oh. Well, you seem to know who I am. You want to tell me who you are? Sure. Lou Miller. Lou Miller? But you're... You're dead. <laughs> that would make it simple, huh? No matter how scary a ghost is, there are ways of making them disappear. Now, me, Howard, I'm the real McCoy. Like, if you want it right between the eyes, I'm Marge's real husband, and that's my kid inside. Oh, my God. Maybe it won't take too much praying to turn me back into a ghost. That's what you and me are going to talk over, Howard. You're the only one with the keys to turn time back again. Just the way it was. A completely stunned Howard can only stare at this specter from the past. A man so evidently his physical superior that he could not solve anything on that level nor on any other level, as he is about to find out. I'll return shortly with Act Three. Hello? Hi, honey. How would you like to go out to dinner tonight? I'd love it. Where? Honey, you can have your choice of over 40 of the finest restaurants in the Metroplex. Jack, you joined the Carriage Trade Dinner Club. How did you know? With the Carriage Trade Dinner Club, you get over 40 delicious dinners free in the finest restaurants honey, by how Coach did... and Horses Tavern, the Buttery, Caruso Spaghetti and Wine, Fix Gallery, Kirby's, the Catfish Hut, honey, and many more. Honey, how did you know? And there are absolutely no restrictions. You can order any dinners on the menu. Then when the waiter brings your check, you simply present your Carriage Trade Dinner Club card, and you're charged for just one dinner. The second is free. Jeanette, how do you know all about the Carriage Trade Dinner Club? They're running great big ads in the morning news, Times Herald, and Star Telegram telling all about it, dear. Like the one you slipped into my briefcase? Uh-huh. I wanted my husband to have the very best, the Carriage Trade Dinner Club, the most respected dinner club in the world. From time to time you find one that is different from the rest. Someone who really wants the things he does to be the best And when you do, you know that you can count on them to see you through All the problems that beset you make you happy when you're blue Get on board with Bentley Chevrolet Come get ahead to have his first meeting with something which neither you nor I, or at least most of us, would be able to handle. Total immorality. And it takes not much longer than a few minutes both to tell Howard the story of Lou and very little longer to realize that he is dealing with a man who has nothing left to lose. Not even his conscience. What you suggest to Marge is impossible. Why? Because everything, bank books, money, drafts, checks, anything valuable is locked up in the vaults by now. So? 
You're executive vice president, aren't you? Yes. You got the keys, haven't you? Yes. Once the time lock disengages, which will be... Let's see, it's 6 o'clock now. Exactly 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. You mean you can't get in there tonight? You'd need an atom bomb to blow that vault door open. The first thing tomorrow morning, you could get those bank books and cash in the dough. Well, I could. But I can't. Why not? Because, first of all, the money for the insurance was left in trust to Billy. It could only be spent on him. But that no longer holds either. The money isn't Billy's or anyone's but the insurance company's now. How come? It was paid in good faith because you were presumed to be dead. And you are quite manifestly alive. Now, look, don't give me none of that lawyer double talk. Who knows I'm alive except you and me and Marge? Look, suppose I did go along with you. As soon as you'd leave, what's to stop me from going to the police and telling them what's happened? For this chicken feed, not much. Wouldn't be worth coming back to put a bullet hole through your head or Marge's or the kids. Your own son? Who wants him? I never did. One big reason I lit out. You're welcome to him. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Why didn't you come in and see me as soon as you got home? Well, I knew you were eating dinner. We have a visitor. He heard his father's voice and, and there was no holding him. Want to see some of the tricks Uncle Lou's been showing me with my gun? Uncle? Well, Lou's a friend of Ralph's, Howard, and just sort of got made an honorary uncle. It's all right, Marge. I know who Lou is. Oh, the twirly parts I'm not so good at yet because my hands are kind of small and I haven't had enough practice, Lou says. But I'll show you one thing he taught me. Turn around, Lou. Billy, I really think... It's okay, Marge. Let the kid have his fun. Okay, I'm turning my back. I don't know you're there. Stick him up. Ah, you got me. Bad sucker. <laughs> See, Daddy? See? If you're going to heist a guy and he starts to turn on you, hit the trigger right away. That's what Uncle Lou taught you? If you don't want to find yourself dead. But supposing the other man doesn't have a pistol? Who takes chances? Besides, Billy knows I have one. Still there, you see? That's not a real pistol either. Oh, of course it isn't. Who'd have a real pistol in this house? Can we play some more now? Nope, Billy. That's enough. Time for bed. Let's go. But I don't want to go to bed. I want to play some more. It's time, son. Oh, well, okay. You'll come up and say goodnight, too, Uncle Lou. Sure, sure. If you take off right now with your mother. Okay, chum. Up the wooden hill. <laughs> you always say that. It's a staircase. It's what my mother always used to say to me. You're a cute kid. You wouldn't think it, but I really go for kids. And them for me. Him and me can have a real ball this weekend. You're not welcome in this house. What's the matter, Howard boy? You afraid I'm going to let Billy know you ain't his real father? For his sake. It would be better for your son not to have his whole life shaken up. Well, I got news for you. If you and Marge don't play things my way... This whole family's going to get shook right out of sight. Now go pour me a shot till we get the kid out of this, and I can lay out for you and Marge just how we're going to play this thing. You can't ask me to rob my own bank. I ain't asking, I'm telling you. On Monday morning, once that time locks off, you pack a suitcase with 250 grand. And don't go writing down serial numbers. And keep the bills as small as you can. But what's the point? You can't get away with it. I'll be sitting here with Marge and Billy. And little Bertha here. Anything goes wrong with the outline I already gave you. Anything. You're suddenly out a wife and a kid. Right? But no matter how much time we try to set up for you, you, you get away. The police will be right on your trail. How, Howie boy? How? I'm dead, Remember? I don't even exist. Who'd be looking for me? When we tell our story. Don't you see it all, Howard? Do you think any of us is going to be alive after... Who the devil is that? What kind of a double cross is this? That's a sheriff. Now, look, don't lose your head. He's an old friend. He could have stopped by for a dozen reasons. Well, one of them better not be me. Now, listen, both of you. I'm going upstairs with Billy. You leave all the doors open. If anything goes wrong, let me tell you both, this is a real gun. And the first shot I fire goes right through that kid's head. Your own son. What kind of a man are you? The kind neither of you patsies would like to find out about. Open up and get rid of him. Hey, Jim. The lights are all on. I knew someone had to be home. Yeah, well, we were just sitting down to dinner. Well, this won't take long, but 
I'd like to step inside. Uh, oh, sure. Hi, Marge. Hello, Jim. Everything okay? Of course. Why not? Well, I don't know. You just don't look yourself. You're always so full up of the old get up and go. Oh, that I think I, I think I got a touch of the flu. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's going around these days. I got two deputies out with it. Or else they got a couple of girlfriends my phone tabs haven't turned up. <laughs> Maybe there's a gap in the tape. <laughs> Jim, Marge sort of had dinner on the table practically, so, uh... Oh, sure. But, um, what I have to say can be said quickly. Maybe shouldn't be said at all, but... You're two old friends of mine not to. That's a flyer just came in this morning to the sheriff's office. Here. You two have a gander at it. You don't have to read all the writing. I'll, uh, give you the gist. That there's a picture of John Clemens wanted for armed robbery and the killing of a policeman in California. Out on parole from Soledad State Security Prison, alumnus of Joliet, armed dangerous, to be approached with caution. Three former suspected murders will shoot to kill. Nothing to lose. Because when he's taken this time, he goes up the river the rest of the way. I don't know any John Clemens. Nor I. But if his name wasn't John Clemens, wouldn't you know him? If his name was maybe Lou Miller? But Lou's dead. Lou isn't dead. This guy Clemens was in the service. I got a set of his fingerprints from there. And eight years ago, when Lou swore on as deputy to dive in the reservoir looking for the money that got stolen... He had to record a full set of fingerprints. No, sir, I'm sorry to have to say it for many reasons. They're the same guy. Lou Miller is still alive. Well, all right. Now, look, suppose he is. What's that got to do with us? I don't know. Maybe nothing. But there is Billy, and this guy is on the run and desperate. Uh, just in case, I'm going to give you some protection. Can I use the phone? Well, what for? Well, you might turn up here. I'm going to cover you for a while with a 24-hour guard. Okay, everyone, freeze. Don't anybody make even one little move. So you beat me to it, Lou. You always move too slow, Jim. March. Howard, get back in that corner. Lou, don't lose your head. That's just what I'm planning to keep. Come on, move. That's better. Okay, Jim. Just face me like you are, and very slow and easy, slip the buckle and drop your gun belt. That's it. Right on the floor. That's right. Now, you got any rope, heavy cord, wire, adhesive tape in the house? Come on, come on. You know I ain't got nothing to lose by now. Want me to shoot you instead of tying you up? I just bought some new rope for... Oh, what difference does it make? It's in the kitchen closet. Okay, everyone. Now, just let's move out to the kitchen. Careful. Real careful. That's it. Keep moving. Don't try anything. Enter the kitchen. That's it. Now, I'm just staying here in the door. Marge, you sit at the table. You too, Sheriff. Howard, fetch the rope. Stick them up. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. I did it right again, Uncle Lou. Billy, where did you get that gun? Well, you took mine away, and then you were all playing games, and everybody else was having fun, so I came downstairs, and I found this heavy old gun by the living room door. Gosh, it makes a loud bang, doesn't it, Uncle Jim? Well, it sure does, Billy. Uh, Marge, why don't you take Billy back to bed? But I want to say goodnight to Uncle Lou. Billy, son, don't spoil the game. Uncle Lou's just playing possum to make you look real good. Now, don't spoil his game, huh? How is he, Sheriff? Bullet got him right in the spine. Too late for the ambulance. How is he out? This time he's gone for good. Oh. Did you get Billy to bed? Yes. What's going to happen to us now? Howard, what have I brought on you? 
We'll weather it, Marge. But the whole story will come out now. And I'm not thinking about us. But what it'll do to Billy. What a thing to grow up with. Just a minute, you two. Isn't there a quote somewhere about God moving in a mysterious way his wonders to perform? That's almost the exact quote, but... Main thing, it seems to me, in all this is to keep Billy from being all broke up over what was an accident. Jim, when the story breaks in the papers, how can it be kept from Billy? The question is first, can it be kept out? How? Of course, it's going to be a story. A man is dead. But a story about what man? I don't understand you. You're returning that insurance money to the company, of course, Howard. Well, naturally. So now let's take a good, hard look at the rest of it. Now, I intend to have a long talk with Judge Markham. Now, I can't answer for him, of course, but I've known him all our lives. Now, if I was in his place, here's the way I see it. This man's legal name is John Clemens. He's been using that name for over eight years. He's an old killer. There's a statewide alarm out for him. So now, here's me, the sheriff, an old friend of yours, visiting for the evening, when this John Clemens tries to pull off a heist. Two shots are fired, one from my gun, one from his. The one from my gun kills this John Clemens. So, uh, where does Lou Miller figure in this? A man already dead eight years? You mean Billy? The whole time? doesn't have to know exactly what he's done. It was an accident, Mark. Oh. The child has no idea what he's doing. Who'd want to place this burden on his shoulders? Like I say, it's not my decision, thank God. But I'd hope Judge Markham feel about it, that you only get a chance to live once. Seems fair enough to me the best you ought to have is, like him, one chance to die. <laughs> What would you do? What would I do? Faced with a decision like this. Open up an old, closed Pandora's box and saddle an eight-year-old child with a swarm of circumstances he's not equipped to handle and mark him for life? Or leave the alternative truth that a man who chose another life and another name and who long deserved to die finally met his comeuppance, killed by a bullet fired in self-defense. Perhaps the sheriff said it best. God moves in mysterious ways. I'll be back shortly. On the corner, church's kitchen's making golden fried chicken. Right before your eyes, always crisp, deep fried. The way chicken should be fried. Golden crisp flavor. There's a party in every box of crispy Church's fried chicken. And the bigger the box, the bigger the party. Whether you're celebrating the fall of the Roman Empire, the 48th anniversary of the Little Orphan Annie fan club, or whether you're celebrating 5 o'clock today, a box of crispy, crunchy Church's fried chicken will make it happier with a double crunch in every bite. Take home a party. Take home churches, the crispy lovers' chicken. Drop by churches, fried chicken kitchen. The bowling taste of churches comes ringing through. The bowling taste of churches comes ringing through. If you wear or buy eyeglasses, you couldn't live in a better place than Dallas. Optics is right here. One of the nation's largest suppliers of glasses and contact lenses. Opticians and optometrists all over the country send them work. And now, Optics have a special plant sales room open to the public. That means anybody in the Dallas area can now enjoy Texas Sive savings on all glasses and contacts. The widest choice of quality frames. A complete choice of lenses. Clear, tinted, bifocals, contacts, and the new half weights. Lenses that are half the weight of glass. Complete one-day service for most glasses, too. Full satisfaction guaranteed. Optics Vision Center. The special direct sales outlet right at Optics Plant, 2534 Royal Lane between Stimmons and Harry Hines. Open to the public Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5.30, Saturday till 12.
Come in and see for yourself. Put on a happy face, got your vision so bright. At eight years old, there are ghosts and goblins, mysterious figures that move through trees, phantom ghosts that can leap into the mind and spin it flying the wrong way. But time goes by, and a boy grows up, and with two understanding parents and a sheriff who opens his files to let a young man read the truth of his background, Billy can accept his father for what he was and thank his lucky stars for the foster one his mother provided for him. Our cast included Joan Loring, Joseph Julian, Tom Keener, Dan Arco, and Hetty Galen. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Mr. Sanford, I, I'm finished with the job, and I want your okay. Uh, I'll put on the pot and give you a cup of coffee. <laughs> Thanks, I'd appreciate that. Uh, come right down, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Won't be a minute. I'm coming, Mr. Carroll. Mrs. Sanford, the strangest thing. What did you say, Mr. Carroll? Uh, look at that wall. Oh, dear. Another crack? Uh, no, it's, it's not another crack. What? Right. It's the same crack. I, I just filled it with cement. But you couldn't have. It looks old and dry. Look at my hands. They're still covered with cement. Here are my tools, my trowel. I could swear it was closed up not five minutes ago. And, and that cold drop blowing from it. Like from a, a tomb. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. store near you and take advantage of great savings on their buy of the week special yes ladies you'll want several of these 100 percent no iron polyester dresses made to sell for over 20 dollars sale price is only 12.99 each or two for 25 dollars this shipment has just arrived and features the newest in fall fashions see these outstanding polyester dresses right away at meyer sale price to just 12.99 each or two for 25 dollars and remember you also receive the added savings of s h green stamps at meyer's You know, when you get right down to what a burger ought to taste like, you get down to cooking burgers just the way people like them. Now that sort of thinking is why Whataburger makes burgers that taste so good. Whataburger cooks them to your order. Big, 100% pure beef burgers. A full quarter pound of goodness. Lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, mustard or mayonnaise, and onions. Whee! And those fresh toasted buns add just the right touch. Throw in some crisp golden fries and an ice cold Coca Cola, and partner, you got yourself a meal to remember. The Whataburger, from the folks who sure have a good idea of what a burger ought to be. <laughs> <laughs>